Good morning. The Senate Committee on Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions will please come to order. Um, Senator Corker is chairing a Foreign Relations Committee hearing down the hall about when the President of the United States can use nuclear weapons. We're on a, we're taking a different tack today. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're looking at something quite different and extremely interesting to me. It's about gene editing and a new technology with amazing potential that raises important ethical questions as well. Senator Murray and I will each have an opening statement, then we'll introduce the witnesses. After the witnesses' testimony, Senator will each have five minutes of questions. Eric Lander, a leading geneticist and mathematician who is integral to the Human Genome Project said, quote, it's hard to recall a revolution that has swept biology more swiftly than CRISPR. Today we're looking at this remarkable technology to edit genes that has the potential to treat devastating diseases, including those that currently have limited treatments or cures. While CRISPR is not the only way to edit the human genome, it's one of the most exciting and talked about ways in the medical research community. It's a relatively new technology. It essentially uses molecules that can be targeted to act as scissors to cut and edit genes. While CRISPR acts as the search function, it goes and finds the mutated gene. Is it the case nine? Is that the way you say it? Hmm? Cas9 is the tool that deletes the disease-causing gene, inserts new genes, or repairs mutated genes. In a way, it's like cutting and pasting in a computer document. That may be an oversimplification, but CRISPR technology is less expensive, more precise, and more readily available to scientists all over the world than other gene editing technologies. A New York Times story in August reported that CRISPR can be used to do something as frivolous as making yeast glow like jellyfish to something as serious as making real strides against diseases such as correcting the gene that causes sickle cell anemia. While CRISPR was developed in 1993, its use was perfected for humans in 2013, only four years ago. Its most widespread use until now has been in agriculture. Disease-resistant wheat and rice has been created using CRISPR, and CRISPR has been used to modify tomatoes and soybeans to improve yields and create healthier soybean oil. There is the potential to create crops that can produce higher yields, are able to live through, live through a drought, and have increased nutrition value. Some researchers are even looking at ways to make better tasting crops. CRISPR's use in humans is more recent, but the possibility of the diseases it could treat and the lives that could be improved is remarkable. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, sickle cell disease occurs in about one out of every 365 African American births. One of our witnesses today will be able to speak to research on how CRISPR can help with this devastating disease. Edison's Medicine, who's represented by one of our other witnesses today, sees the potential to treat blood disease that today are currently only treatable through blood transfusions and bone marrow transplants. Using CRISPR, the genes causing blood disease could be edited and readministered to treat the disease more safely and effectively. For cancer patients, CRISPR could improve the amount of time immune cells are active in fighting tumors. The possibilities could go on further. If we could eventually identify the gene mutation that, for example, shows a predisposition to Alzheimer's, could we edit that gene and prevent the suffering and heartache that causes, that Alzheimer's causes? While CRISPR and other gene editing technologies could transform human health, it's not hard to see how we can quickly get into societal and ethical issues. The technology could lead to permanent changes in the human genome. There's even the possibility of making changes in embryos to create so-called designer babies. In the hands of our adversaries, CRISPR poses national security concerns through the potential to produce new biological weapons. In February 2016, former Director of National Intelligence James Clapper added gene editing to a list of weapons of mass destruction and proliferation. I know the leaders at Oak Ridge National Laboratory and other laboratories and other places in the intelligence community are having classified discussions similar to the one we're having today. Part of our job on this committee is to learn about new technologies, to lead the discussions with experts 
about the implications of these scientific advancements and to assure that the National Institutes of Health and others have the proper authority to oversee and conduct research. Our committee has a long history of working in a bipartisan way to pass legislation that helps advance biomedical research to improve the health of Americans. Through the 21st Century Cures Act last year and the reauthorization of the Food and Drug Administration user fees this year. Senator Murray has had a special role in that over the last three years in the Appropriations Committee on which others of us serve, which has added $2 billion a year to National Institutes of Health, and then another $4.8 billion through the 21st Century Drugs Act, and I thank her for that. I'm also a member of that Appropriations Committee. I'm a strong proponent of what we just described, and CRISPR is just one of the amazing discoveries that has come from basic research funded in part by the federal government. Today's hearing is truly a hearing. I intend to do more listening than talking, and I appreciate our panel taking the time to discuss the promising technology today. Senator Murray.